Hi everybody, welcome to Blue Collar Musician, episode number two. My name is Brett Cohen. You can find me at brettcohenmusic.com and all the social media sites at Brett Cohen. Today's episode is titled Your First 100 Days as a Professional Musician. And again, this is going to be geared towards the guys who are just starting up as professionals. So for guys who are more established, I apologize. This is something you probably have already done in your career, obviously. Uh, so more videos will be coming that will speak to people who are more established in the business. Also, this is geared towards individuals that are trying to be professional musicians. I know a lot of you out there maybe have a startup band that you want to uh, make it with the whole band. And you should watch this video because some of the things will apply. But this is geared towards the individual who wants to be a professional musician. So with that said, let's jump into it. So like I had said in my last video, you have to remember that you are the owner of a startup business. So as such, you have to remember that first and foremost, you need to present yourself as a professional business owner in everything you do. So with that said, there are certain things administratively that you're going to need to do before you ever go out and try to play a note to be able to present yourself in that fashion. So the first thing to do is to get business cards. And uh, you can go to a site like vistaprint.com. I used a lot in the early days, and they will print a whole bunch of cards for you for free. You just pay for the shipping. And there's certain upgrades you can do, like if you don't want an advertisement on the card, it's a couple of bucks. It's a very small investment, but this is absolutely your lifeline. This is how people are going to get to know you. I know, it seems dumb. People don't even keep business cards, but... If you hand someone a business card, maybe they'll take your number and put it in their phone or they'll, they'll go to your Facebook page. But this way they have your name. A lot of times, especially in noisy clubs, I might say my name to you and you might not hear it. My name is Brett Cohen. All the time people say, did you say Greg Owen or, or Brent something or all kinds of off the wall things. If I hand them a business card, they look down, they see my name is Brett Cohen. On that card, I'm going to have a phone number, a website, probably even my social media handles now. Uh, when I first started out, we didn't have all the social media stuff, at least to, that is to say it wasn't as prevalent. Um, when I do a new run of cards, I'm going to put all that stuff on it too. So again, this is your lifeline. So you want to get that done right away. The next thing you want to do is get a really good looking photo. You don't necessarily have to pay a professional to take a, an amazing photo of you, Although, I wouldn't shy away from it. I mean, you can find a lot of really inexpensive photographers that will do great work for you. Uh, but just get a really nice, high-resolution photo of yourself, maybe a, a handful of them. And that way, you're going to have that for your website, which we're going to get to in, in just a minute. Uh, the next thing you want to do is compile videos of yourself. So when you do go out to, uh, to gigs or maybe you have uh, old gig footage, things like that, put together videos, video compilations, anything where people can visibly see and hear you playing. That's so important now. Everything is so YouTube driven. And again, when I was first starting out, things weren't as video driven. You could use a lot of audio and it was just as good. But unfortunately now, visual and video is everything. So you really want to get that put together. The next thing you need to do is write a bio. And uh, this is extremely important. I can't stress how important a uh, bio is. This is how people are going to find out about you, really. And don't lie. <laughs> Just say things that are true. I see people lie and exaggerate all the time in bios, and there's no point in doing it. With the internet now, anyone can find out anything. If you say that you played Harmonica for America and you didn't, then it takes about five seconds to find out that, that it's not true. So make sure it's truthful. It doesn't have to be long. If you haven't done a lot in leading up to it in your amateur career, then it can be very short. But keep it to the point, keep it musical, make sure the grammar's good, make sure the spelling's good, and make sure it, it reads right. It should read in the third person. It shouldn't be, I did this when I was 17, yada yada. It should be about you. Brett Cohen at 17 did such and such a thing. So if you need to hire somebody to do it, again, you can hire individuals to do these things really inexpensive these days. You can give people the pertinent facts and they'll word it for you in a certain way that uh, is going to be more palatable. Okay, so you have your photos, you have your videos, you have your bio. Now you're ready to put it all together into a website. And again, I'd say the business cards are your lifeline. 
really the business cards are there to drive people to the website. The website is your bread and butter. That is the, the heart of the whole thing. It's marketing. And I do suggest that you have your own .com as opposed to a reverb nation or just sending people to a social media site. There is still a level of extra credibility that goes into having your own .com. It shows you're a professional. You're willing to invest the money and the time to do it. With that said, it's not really expensive, but again, this is all about perception. So you can go to a site, and um, and again, all these sites I'm talking about, I'm not uh, an endorser necessarily of any of these sites. I don't have deals with them, but uh, Band Vista is a site that I've used before, and I want to say it's like um, fifteen dollars a month or something like that. And you can go on there, and anybody in the world can build a professional-looking website. You don't have to have any kind of skills whatsoever. Uh, they have templates, and you just plug and play all the info and everything in there and you're going to have a great looking site and band is not the only one i mean i'm sure there's a thousand other sites like it just do some research into simple website building and development you will need to spend a couple of bucks buying your dot com but i think it's twelve dollars or something to to buy a dot com and i do suggest you get something as simple as possible to your name again like mine is brettcohenmusic.com i think that's simple it's not Brett Cohen, Las Vegas musician. It's not California native Brett Cohen music band dot com. And, and obviously I have kind of a unique name. There's some people out there with my name. Um, in fact, there's a guy right there on YouTube. If you search my name on YouTube, you'll see uh, another Brett Cohen uh, back in, in New York who have done some stuff. But, uh, but I digress. If you have a very common name, Jim Smith, you might not get jimsmith.com or Jim Smith music. You might need to be a little more creative. But try to get something that is as simple as possible, rolls off the tongue, and is very plain. Like it should be jimsmithmusician.com, not the amazing Jim Smith. Or, you know what I mean? Like it should be very specific to music. People should know that they're going to a professional musician's website uh, when they go there. Okay? And also, really important going back to the business cards. And I know I've said this a couple of times, but I do want to stress this. Do not order your business cards until you have your domain name. So those are really things that should be done concurrently. At least getting the domain name, you don't have to build the site yet, but make sure your domain name is on the business card. Also on the website, make sure you have links out to all your social media. Because again, social media is super important. While I do think you need to have the .com, you do need to be driving traffic to your social media as well. So make sure all those links are there on the site. One thing that's so easily overlooked is your outgoing voicemail message. Remember, people are calling you and you're a professional. So your outgoing message should be a professional sounding message. Uh, it shouldn't be your, your favorite Cheech and Chong sketch. You know, um, think about if you called your lawyer and, and he had his favorite Cheech and Chong sketch as his voicemail message. Maybe you'd want to work with that guy. Maybe you wouldn't. I don't know. But uh, make it professional. And what I always like to say is something to the effect of, Hello, this is Brett Cohen of BrettCohenMusic.com or something like that. I always make sure that my website is in there, what I consider my company name is in there, and, uh, and obviously my name, and it's very clear and concise. So many people have gone to my website. I've gotten so much work because I say on my outgoing message, BrettCohenMusic.com. It piques people's interests. So don't overlook the small stuff. You know, really make that a priority. Okay, so those are your marketing tools. Now you're ready to go out and present yourself as a professional musician. How do you do that? What's the next step? One of the most valuable things in the world to me are open jams, open mics, whatever you want to call them, places where musicians get together and just jam and get on stage and play. So important, really. And every city has them somewhere. And if you're in a really small town uh, in the middle of nowhere, I mean, you might have some problems anyway as far as staying in your small town. You're going to have to drive to a city where things are happening, but every city in the world has these at some point. You need to find out where they are, and you can do that just by asking around, um, looking for advertisements, looking on Craigslist, which we'll get more into Craigslist in a minute, but um, you wanna go to these open jams, business cards in hand, you gotta be ready to talk to people, you gotta be ready to play. If you show up and you don't play, you get intimidated or something, then you're not gonna have any credibility. So you have to really be ready to come up Show what you got. Be ready to talk to people. Be ready to be friendly. Do not be afraid to hand out your business cards. Even if you just say hello to somebody, hand them a business card and just say, I'd, I'd like to talk with you in the future. Something simple. 
this again comes to the personality and the attitude thing, but you do have to be outgoing and you have to be willing to meet people. However, what I have found is uh, if you're a pretty good player, you have something to offer, then a lot of people are going to end up approaching you because other people are more outgoing. And especially if they're looking to hire somebody, then they're going to be more apt to come up and talk to you uh, so you don't have to do as much of the cold calling aspect of it, so to speak. But that's what I love about jams is it's not really cold calling because at that point everybody is interacting musically. It's a lot easier than to interact socially. So the, when I first came to Vegas, and I mean Vegas is a town that has so many of them, um, I was literally hitting open mics from 9 at night till 4 or 5 in the morning. A lot of them went well in, into the morning. And within just a couple of weeks, I was literally working every night of the week, and so much of it was because of contacts that I made at these open mics. Back in California, a lot of it was the same thing. I made so many contacts from going to open mics, and I ended up hosting open mics, which is a topic that I'm going to talk about um, in the future on this channel. But so important, absolutely vital to being able to get out there and meet people and be able to do this and get hired. So a few moments ago, I mentioned Craigslist. And I want to get into that topic a little more right now. Uh, Craigslist has a weird reputation, and it is a well-earned weird reputation. There's a lot of weird stuff that goes on on Craigslist. Uh, at the same time, though, it is a great resource, an extremely great resource, to find work as a musician. They have the musician section in the classifieds where you'll find a lot of people looking for players or putting bands together or, or looking for acts or whatnot. And that's uh, really great. Now, a lot of the ads are nonsense. They're stupid. They're people who are not really serious about being professionals. So it's a matter of really going through and filtering all the BS to get to what's legitimate. But another thing that I have found, and a lot of people don't always think about it, there's also a section on Craigslist called gigs. And there's a subsection in there called talent gigs. And it gets overlooked a lot of times because, to be real honest, like most of it is sleazy, sleazy stuff. When they say talent, it's a lot of weird creepers looking for nude models, uh, looking for escorts. A lot of, um, I shouldn't say unsavory. I mean, if you're into that stuff, whatever it is, what it is. But um, it's, it's not the kind of thing you're thinking of when you're thinking about the music business. But what I found is every so often there are music gigs in there. And I have found specifically that in that section, those are the most credible music gigs as a rule. At least that was the case um, a couple years ago when I was looking at it quite a bit for work. So don't shy away from that. Look in there and you can make contacts and, and things like that. And also a lot of people will advertise open mic jams on Craigslist. They'll advertise uh, gigs on Craigslist. It is a great resource. You do have to filter through a lot of nonsense, a lot, a lot of nonsense along the way. But a lot of my early gigs I got from Craigslist, and um, and it was fantastic. And I mean, when, when I first started out, we, we didn't have Craigslist. We were looking in the Recycler, and that was before the Internet was more prevalent. Now the Recycler, uh, it, was a, it was a newspaper, basically for people that don't know, it was a classified newspaper. And that's where you found all the, all the musicians to play with and all the jams and stuff. Well, now Craigslist is the new Recycler. So hopefully that puts a little perspective on it for some of the uh, for some of the other cats who have been around the block a minute and know uh, know what the recycler was, but do not shy away from it. Embrace it. So another thing you're going to want to do as you meet people at these open mics, you're going to meet a lot of guys who are already in bands, or maybe you'll meet a complete band. Sometimes complete bands will go down there and try out new material and things like that. But uh, try to get cards from these people. Try to get in contact with everybody that you meet at the open mics. And go to their gigs when you have a night off. Go and show support. Don't ask to get up and jam. Just go there and support. And if they want you to jam, they'll invite you up. Um, that's one thing I can't stress enough. Do not go anywhere and try to tell everybody that you need to sit in. Don't ever do that ever, ever, actually. Um, be invited or have maybe somebody else will advocate on your behalf, but you never want to be the guy asking to sit in on a gig. Just go and support. Um, and when I say support, this goes for the open mics too. When you go out and buy something, um, yeah, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. I mean, when I first came to Vegas, I came here with almost no money in my pocket, but every spot I went to, I spent at least five bucks. I bought at least, um, a drink or something just to contribute. 
you're showing support, you're showing the bottom line. You don't want to go places and loiter. You don't want to get the reputation with the clubs or anyone else as being a loiterer. Be a supporter. That is all part of cultivating relationships. That's part of networking. That's part of staying fresh in people's minds because not everybody goes to every single open jam every week. But this way, you're staying in front of people and they might think the next time they need a player of whatever instrument, their regular guy can't make it, then they'll be more apt to call you. We're all guilty of this. I don't know if guilty is the right word, but I know so many great players. I really do. I've been so blessed in my career and so many guys that are great friends. But a lot of times when I need a sub, something comes up like that, I think of the last guy I talked to who played that instrument. And, uh, and that's just how it is. That's why it's so important to, to stay in front of people. So one thing I think is really important that sometimes people don't always think about is being prepared ahead of time musically. And what I mean by that is you're meeting all these guys who are in bands and you're going out and supporting their bands, ideally. And a lot of times these bands will have websites or some kind of site and it will show their song list. Look at all the song lists of these bands and just start learning all those tunes. Um, when you're just starting out in, in cover music, I should say, is really what I'm addressing in this particular topic. Uh, in cover music, it's important that you know a lot of tunes, but you have to know all the right tunes. When I first got into covers... I thought, um, well, here's 100 songs that I assume people are playing, but I, I, I just assumed, and they weren't the songs people were playing. So look at the song list. When you're going and you're watching a band, uh, write down the songs that are playing. Put them in your phone or something. Go home and learn them. And all the better, if there's one particular band you're really building a close relationship with and you're studying all the material, when they need you to sub, it's the work's done already, the preparation work. And you can fill in on a moment's notice if they said, hey, can you come in tonight and play these tunes? Here's our list. You already have a leg up. Um, you cannot learn too many songs when it comes to playing cover music. You really cannot learn too many songs. And when I say learn, I use the term uh, learn loosely. Uh, we're going to get into that in future videos, but I write charts on everything and, and not fancy elaborate charts, just basic charts that will get me through the tunes. I can put them up on a music stand. And, uh, and I can play the song. I don't have to memorize everything. It takes time to memorize. But a lot of times you may get a call on a Wednesday to play 50 songs you've never played before on Friday. You just can't memorize them. You really can't. So we'll get into that. But if you already have the leg up on that band set list, then maybe out of those 50, you only need to learn like five or 10. So that's all part of mental preparation and, and musical preparation. So remember that that is an important aspect uh, of this whole thing is always being ready. So my final piece of advice on this topic is uh, actually the most controversial, and you'll see why, but I think it's vital. Uh, in the beginning, when you're just starting out and people need to get to know you, take every gig. Every single gig. Okay, I shouldn't say every single gig. Don't take a gig that you know you're going to go and fall completely on your face on. Like if someone calls you at 9 in the morning to play reggae at noon and you've never played a reggae song in your life, okay, don't take that gig. But you know what I'm trying to say, within reason. Take any gig you're offered. It doesn't matter if it pays $50 or $1,000 or it um, pays you in hot dogs in the beginning. That's why I say this is controversial. I do have a lot of friends and a lot of people whose opinions I really respect who say right from the get-go they want to set the standard that uh, – they will not come out for anything less than uh, $200, say, for example. I disagree. I just flat out disagree with that. Uh, there's a time and a place for that, and that time and a place is once you're established. When you need to build a reputation, that is priceless. So it doesn't matter what it costs. If you're getting paid anything, you're profiting because that is marketing. That first 100 gigs, I would say, that you do, that's all marketing. If you make anything off of that, then all the better because that's money you're not spending uh, in advertising. You're building experience, you're building relationships, and you're building your craft. So take every gig that you're offered that you can realistically do and don't shy away from it because of the money. Again, later on, you can always renegotiate terms and you can tell people, hey, I know last time I played for you, I took 50 bucks, but I was really trying to get the gig, and uh, and unfortunately, because of my schedule now, I'm going to need a little more money. There's a technique to it. I mean, you don't want to say exactly that. In fact, we'll probably address things like that in uh, 
in a future video, there's a way to say things and a way not to. But my point is that there's a time and a place to uh, address those kinds of things. So with all that being said, hopefully that will get you started. I call it your first 100 days as a musician because it sounds like a really catchy title for an episode. Um, it might be more than 100 days. It might be less than 100 days. But all that administrative stuff that I talked about, if you already have videos from, from your amateur experience, and maybe you already have a good photo. You can do all that administrative stuff in an afternoon. Um, you know, it doesn't take very long. And you can be out hitting the streets doing all the stuff that you need to do. So I really encourage you to do it. And do it fervently. I mean, this is your business. Maybe you have another job. Maybe you have another source of income when you're first getting started. And most people do. At least a part-time job. Because it does take a while before you get to the point where you're actually making money. But... You just have to be on fire for it. I can't stress that enough. If you're not on fire for it, you don't want it bad enough, it will not happen for you. Well, that about does it for this topic. I hope you guys got a lot out of this. Um, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and make sure you keep an eye out for future videos. And please share these videos. I really want them to get around to a lot of people. And uh, I want more people to get this info because when I was starting out, I would have killed <laughs> for all this info. I, I really would have. Uh, again, this is Brett Cohen. You're watching The Blue Collar Musician. Uh, you can find me at brettcohenmusic.com and all the social medias at Brett Cohen. You guys have a good one. See you soon.